So, Fargo Season 3 stars Ewan McGregor playing two roles, Carrie Coon, Elizabeth Mary Winstead, Michael Stuhlbarg and David Thewlis. This season is set in 2010, making it the season closest to us in terms of its timeline. The story is a lot more detached from the first two seasons. Where season 2 can be seen as a straight up prequel of the first season, season 3 is pretty much its own thing, aside from the odd easter egg here and there and one character from season 1 who pops up in a supporting role. So the story here follows two brothers, Ray and Emmett Stussy, both played by McGregor. Emmett is a successful businessman who has a cagey relationship with his younger brother. Ray feels wronged and slighted at how differently the two brothers' lives have panned out, believing himself to have been scammed by Emmett over a valuable stamp the duo traded years ago. Ray and his ex-con girlfriend Nikki plan to rob Emmett as revenge. Meanwhile, Emmett tries to cut ties with a shady organisation his business borrowed money from a year before, but the company has other plans. A mysterious representative, V. M. Varga, a man with immaculate charisma but horrific dental hygiene, arrives at the business and essentially begins to stronghold Emmett and his partner, all the while Emmett has to deal with his brother. Meanwhile, policeman Gloria Burgle investigates the murder of her stepdad, a murder which entangles the lives of all the principal characters. So, it's a very Fargo-esque plot. It has all the staples of the series. In fact, the plan in the opening episode with Ray telling an ex-con to rob his brother, but the man who he hires ends up at the wrong house with disastrous consequences, is as Fargo as it can possibly get. With that being said, my overall thoughts on season 3 were that it was alright. It was okay. It was an ordinary season of Fargo. And because it followed two very strong seasons, there is a whiff of disappointment in the air. It lacks that pop, that whiz, and those little nuanced moments. In some ways it feels like a first draft, or made by people who weren't giving it their fullest effort, which I think is actually the case, as I believe Noah Hawley was working on another TV show at the same time as this. Don't get me wrong, it's a solid season. The issue I have is that it just doesn't compare to the first two seasons, which were far more engaging. In fact, a lot of this season is covering ground already covered, like the whole thing with Gloria and the Chief who just does not want to listen to her theories about the murder. Didn't we already see a relationship like this in the first season with Molly and Saul Goodman? I liked this season, as with the previous two, the characters are interesting, especially that weirdo Varga, and it's intriguing seeing them all mix and the storylines intertwine. But I'm trying to articulate why I can't help but feel a little underwhelmed. And one thing that comes to mind is that I don't think this necessarily warranted 10 episodes. The first season was perfect with 10. With the second, if anything, 10 wasn't enough. But here, with the brothers feud, Gloria who meanders around moping, not really doing much, and the intriguing Varga stuff, which for the most part was left intentionally and frustratingly as a mystery, but ultimately there is not a lot of meat to the story I felt. It veered off into random tangents and directions, like an entire chapter dedicated to the past of the first murder victim, his life as a Hollywood screenwriter. It was kind of random. If there ends up being 10 seasons of Fargo, I think this one will end up somewhere in the middle. Solid, thumbs up, but ultimately gets lost in and amongst the many better seasons. It wasn't as funny as previous seasons, it felt rather dry aside from Varga's appearances, who I thought was hilarious. There's not a lot of colour either, and the cinematography isn't as creative as it has been previously. At times you might think you're watching a standard crime mystery that airs on the BBC, not the absurdist modern day classic that is Fargo. That absurdism is really pushed to the point as well, because the thing is, for the most part season 3 has a believable story. But there's strange elements to it that don't feel like classic Fargo wackiness and absurdism, but more like contrived and lazy writing. Things like the ex-con standing in the exact position needed for someone to throw a kitchen appliance on top of him, or Emmett's car breaking down in the middle of nowhere, a plot device so that another character can catch up with him. 
At the end of the scene, he gets into his car and drives away, with his car magically repaired. Another time, a character set to be shot in an elevator spider-mans his way on top of the elevator and then seemingly vanishes. There's a lot of things like this, where yeah, I suppose you could chalk it up to the randomness of life, the stranger than fiction like nature of the show, but it's really starting to feel like the writing is starting to suffer. I mean, we've had UFOs on the show, and I found that a lot less problematic than some of the stuff in this season. See, the thing is, most movies and TV shows made to entertain but to make you ponder need to work on two levels. They need to work at the base level, entertaining the viewer, and the deeper level, where they make you think. Martin Scorsese is a master at this, which is why he's such an artsy filmmaker, but still so mainstream. You can watch The Wolf of Wall Street as a sex, drugs and rock and roll extravaganza, which it is at its base level, but you could also look at it as a critique of capitalism, consumerism, materialism, and many things Scorsese was taking shots at. It works on both levels. Fargo is the same. But here in season 3, it leans too far heavily into the deeper themes without enough emphasis on the baseline stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love all that. My entire channel is dedicated to deeper themes and looking at the meaning behind character decisions and all that kind of stuff. And that stuff in season 3 was good. But where other seasons worked on both levels, here I feel as purely as a piece of entertainment, Fargo season 3 is a little dry and flat. When it comes to the themes and commentaries, it is on absolute fire. The surrealism takes off and never quite lands back again. The season, for example, is dedicated to the question of reality and truth. What does it mean for something to be real? Does it need to have actually happened or to be believed as actually happening? It's all a matter of perspective, as one character says. There's a big emphasis on storytelling. Characters tell stories to each other. We are told a story in one animated segment. One of the victims was a novelist. And during the part where it says, this is a true story, the last word to disappear is story. There's a lot said about globalization, about uh, legality versus morality, perception colliding with reality. I don't think it's a coincidence that the season is set shortly after the 2008 financial crash. Gloria goes around the entire show not doing anything, a first for Fargo where the main cop is usually front and centre to keep the show grounded with all the weirdo characters, but she's just kind of there, and again I know it works thematically, she's basically the robot in the story, she says as much, the way in which she feels invisible in the modern world is relatable, but it isn't a lot of fun. So clearly there's a lot to analyse and unpack in this season and it seems intent on subverting your expectations, but it sacrifices entertainment for exploration of its themes, and there's a faint aura of the writers ever so slightly starting to enjoy the smell of their own farts. Like the bowling club scene, perhaps the most esoteric scene in the entire series, it works thematically, but how does it work within the context of the character stories? The open ending too, which again works on a thematic level and ties into a line in the final episode about the world not always working the way it's supposed to, but purely in terms of watching as a viewer and wanting some manner of a conclusion, it feels like a cop-out. It's probably a cleverer season than the previous two, more ambitious in its writing, but that doesn't necessarily make it better. The characters also feel like flanderized versions of classic Fargo stock characters, like we've had the stubborn police chief, but in season 1 he actually felt like a real person and had a personality. Here the guy is just a concrete wall whose only reason to exist is to block Gloria and slow down the story, and then he just kind of disappears. Then there's Sai and Varga, two characters who I like, but they went too far in trying to make Sai this classic, cute, quaint Fargo midwesterner that he just came across as a little dim sometimes. And Varga sometimes has little to offer in scenes other than to launch into a monologue, showcase his disgusting teeth, and occasionally put his cock into people's coffee mugs. The characters in general just feel more one-dimensional here, existing for the sake of the themes of the season. So it looks like, so far, my opinion of Fargo coincides with the consensus. I've heard people say that the first season is great, 
the second is brilliant, and the third is just okay. And I pretty much agree with this. Season one is about the characters, two about the plot, and the third is about the ideas. On to season four, where from what I hear, the show takes a massive nosedive in quality. Thanks for watching.